she votes for gun control only if against environment. So how can we diagram that? Um, so G, um, if G then not E. Perfect. Yeah, so G requires not E. Then what's the contrapositive of that? Um, if E, then not G. Good. Perfect. Now the next rule, what, what was our translation of that? So that was um, if J, wait, yeah, then I. Perfect. Now the thing is, so J then I is good. I'll put that on the side. I'm not going to actually add it in yet mm -hmm. because we're not able to neatly link it into what we already have. And on test day, I would just skip this rule and come back to it once mm -hmm. we could more easily link it off. And, okay. So for a game like this, you would kind of just assume that they have to link. So that's how you would. Well, you could take a quick scan and see that we have the same variables listed enough times mm -hmm. that we're probably going to be able to link everything or at least most things like we have e in the first rule and the third rule we have j in the second and the third we have g in the first and the fourth so every rule is linked to another rule in some way okay but while we're here we're, we're, while we've got j and i what's the contrapositive of that um if not i then not j perfect Um, just another question. So, some so for these games, the way I've kind of been doing it is just like the in-out diagram. Do you find that this is more helpful to just use the um, to diagram it in this way? Do you think that's like a better method, just generally to do for in-out? You mean in-out, in-out like a T-chart? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that too, and we'll get there also. Okay. But that's better for specific scenarios. Okay. What I'm aiming to create here is a, a main diagram that combines all of the rules and makes any inferences really obvious. Okay. But yeah, T-charts are good and you, they're great to use for local diagrams where you have like, if G is in, then what else must be true? Or if, if G is out, then which one of the following must also be out? Right. Okay. So what's the third rule here? Um, I wasn't sure how to write this one, so I kind of just like wrote, wrote E or J or both because I didn't know how to notate it. Yeah, this one's tricky because what this is saying is that it's not, it's not really an obvious conditional. There's no if-then indicators, but what this is saying is it's establishing a minimum where we've always got to have at least one of the two in. So if, if we don't have E, then what can we infer? Um, J. Exactly. If we, if, and if we don't have J, what can we infer? Yeah, so if E is out, then J is in. If J is out, then E is in. So this says not E, then J, and not J, then E. Mm -hmm. And the or both is redundant because in logic, the word or already includes the possibility of both. Right. So what I would do here is I would not write this separately as a standalone conditional. I would actually link it on to our main diagram with the GE rule. Okay. So next to not E, you would connect the J. Exactly. So not E requires J and contrapositive, not J requires E. Okay, that's where I was confused. So I wasn't sure. I didn't realize you could do that, but I guess it makes sense. You can. I mean, if you already have an... Excuse me? It was just confusing me because it felt like... Actually, no, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> no, sure. No, it's, it's something new to get used to. It's a new style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we already have not E before, right. and we have a new rule involving not E, well, it's the same not E, it's the same variable, so why not just keep it simple and avoid repeating the same variable? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I was more confused about the second, like adding the not J to the E. But yeah, that seems weird because you're adding to the beginning, right? Adding to the beginning, yeah. Okay. Adding to the beginning seems weird, but that just is the flow of the rule. Right. So would that mean that, oh yeah, so if there is no J, then there can't be G. Correct. So that is excellent, actually. So that says that by way of E, we can see that not J requires not G. So if J is out, then G must also be out. And on the top chain, G in requires J in. So this is the power of the chain is that it's making these inferences immediately apparent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so yes, yeah, so then you can add I to the top one. Excellent. So now we have J on our main diagram, so we can link in the J-I rule. So J requires I and contrapositive would be what? Uh, not I before not J. Perfect. So not I requires not J. So th those link in very smoothly. Okay. Now the final rule. So, yeah, so um, H and D, um, then G. And then that would be, if not G, then not H or D. Perfect. So our sufficient condition is H and D, which is kind of weird because it's saying that you got to have both of them to mm -hmm. activate this rule. H and D together are sufficient to require G. So this is how I diagram that particular rule. It's a little weird because we have and in the sufficient, which is not really that clean an idea, but that's the nature of the rule, simply. H and D together being in, if they're both in, then we know that G is in. And then, so on the bottom one, not G then, not H or D. Perfect. So the bottom one is saying, if you lack G, then you must lack at least one of H or D. And so the way I indicate this is with a dotted arrow. So the top notation is just for the and, and then the dotted lines for the or. Exactly. And you can feel free to make your own style for this. This is just a simple symbolizing system that I found worked well for me. But and in the sufficient and or in the necessary are the weird ones that don't fly that smoothly. If they were to put and in the necessary and or in the sufficient, then you don't need any of this crazy stuff. Another thing you can do is simply write the word or as a reminder for yourself that this is an, an or in the necessary condition situation. Okay, yeah, I, I get that set up much. Yeah, I'm understanding a lot more now. Perfect, I mean, this is every rule and it's contrapositive linked together into two chains and these chains are the contrapositives of each other. Um, so how would you know to make um, a chain like this versus an in and out? Because I know you said that like for some specific games, it's better to start with that from the beginning. Um, so what would like clue you into doing it like this? Well, for any in out game involving lots of conditionals like this, where, there, where it's likely that all of them will link together, I would start here. And then I would draw that T chart for local specific questions within the game. So in this game, there are questions that say something like, if she votes for healthcare, what else happens? Or if she votes against immigration, what else happens? And we could see, well, in this case, if she votes against immigration, then she also votes against judicial, she votes for environment, and so on. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. 
and feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.